I'm George Young. I play Dr. Victor Canutz. Um, and my role, I mean, what's a challenge is I have to make it as real as possible. This whole show, I mean, I'm sure you've heard from everyone, it, it's all based on science facts, not science fiction. Um, and to get to that point of making it as real as possible, for people to actually feel like this could happen to you, because it can, um, we've had so much research with the CDC, with emergency services in general, within Atlanta and without. And, and that includes my role, that includes my character. I'm researching the virus, my character, within the contained area, trying to find what's ground zero or patient zero, and ultimately trying to find a cure. You know, that'd be best case scenario. It'd be a short show if I find it too short. But anyway, but, um, but to get to that point, I have to, I, there's, so, there's so much um, chat with the CDC members and, and getting a sort of like um, epidemic viral, viral outbreak 101 basically to, to make sure it's authentic uh, what I'm saying make sure it's believable you know, it's a whole lot of medical speak for me I mean you'll see in the first episode if you haven't seen it yet that's kind of where I'm going in the first episode just telling the audience kind of giving pushing that exposition getting the story across as of what the virus is about and making sure you know, this is something real I've heard this on something similar on the news uh, before and now this can happen oh yeah what, can, what would happen if it hits the US uh, to this degree that uh, they call off a whole area of Atlanta. Yeah. What kind of emotional toll do you think it's going to play after you know the pilots? There's death, and it's yeah. not a pleasant death. Yeah, you know? it, it, exactly. I mean, you even see that in the teaser. I mean, and uh, what it's not a pleasant death at all. And what's scarier is that it's we chatted to, to the CDC and stuff. Is this something that can actually happen? If a virus of this strain can be, you know, if it, if it mutates to this degree, can it affect? you in this way and it can and this sort of that and that quickly as well so my character's faced with a lot of this death head on or a lot of these symptoms head on and he's a sort of he's a younger you know doctor there and he or the weight of the of, of, of trying to find the cure find the source of it is on his shoulders within the container I'm the most qualified person within the container area who's going to be able to find the reasoning behind this and at the same time he's just packed, freaking out inside but he has to stay pretty calm and I think it comes across a bit rude or a bit uh, separate you know, separated from other or distant but it kind of, I think I, I have to be my character has to be otherwise he's just going to freak out and, and admit that he's really freaking out and then loses all sense of uh, you know uh, like control um, so it's a, it's a very stressful situation for Dr. Cannon I feel like that's also sort of what sets this show apart like, we, live, we live in an age where there's so many post-apocalyptic type stories but when you look at TV, it's The Walking Dead as zombies, The Strain as vampires. This is a virus that is realistic. So I'm wondering, as you guys sort of forge into this, wade into the like post-apocalyptic pool, like what is it like being the one that is telling the actual realistic and possible way this can happen? Uh, exactly. We talk about this all the time between like, the cast and with Julie and with Chris and Matt, and all the showrunners. It's you know, The Walking Dead, etc. Great shows. Yeah. But, but in this, with this virus, you don't you don't become the Walking Dead. You just become dead, and that is scary in itself. And because it's the most realistic thing that can happen with a virus, and and it's just it's it's exciting that we do get to to bring this to an audience to make you sit down and think, oh wow, I if I was in Atlanta, say as an example, on you know on on Fifth Street, whatever, I'd be in the, within this contained area, and then my neighbours would be outside and. and how would I interact with them anymore? You know, did I like them to begin with or whatever? But but it's like, what would happen then? Looking outside, you're stuck with this virus and you're trying to keep a distance from it, but you're contained as well within this quarantine. You're not allowed out because the government says you can't. And and that's something that can actually happen uh, because there's real measures that people have to take if a virus of this of this quality actually spreads. And it's just a question of of the virus just mutating. Uh, one random it mutates all the time viruses and, and just one mutation we might be one mutation away from something that but at this scale and I, I think it's exciting and also a good thing that we, we pose this to the audience 
as we pose this question. And I, I also love the fact that it's not just the virus that spreads, it's the news about the virus, how we all disseminate the virus, things going viral, it's all part of that analogy. And yeah, it's, it's, I like the fact that it's got that parallel, and you'll see it from the get-go, really, from the first episode. Do we see how this impacts your character on a personal level? You'll see, I mean, we, I, we've all got, we've been badgering Julie and everyone for the script for the fur, further episodes, but we have seen you know, that it's based on a Belgian series, but there are going to be tangents away from that. We're not just going to you know, copy the series, but we have a general idea of where our characters are going, and it's quite exciting out as to what the potential is there. And you'll see in the first episode a lot of seeds are planted, and what seeds grow, and you know, to stick with that seed analogy, um, you'll see. But uh, it is very exciting how we all develop uh, throughout, and I just want to keep it. I want you to watch it and just find out from there. Yeah.